Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the shop. Um, in this video, I'm going to show how I chose to mount a FAS, um, which is a fuel and air separation system, into our uh, 2003 Monaco Dynasty on the Roadmaster S-Series chassis. Uh, it's powered by a Cummins ISL. Uh, the coach is an 03, the engine's an 02. Um, now, between 99 and 2003, um, Cummins had what they call the Cummins Accumulator Pump System, or CAPS system. Um, it work, it, it, it's a similar system, same system they used in the over-the-road truck, Class 8 trucks. Um, we're pulling it a little further fuel, obviously, depending on your man, coach manufacturer. Monaco, the fuel tank's up front, I think majority of them are. So you're pulling it quite a distance, and as the, as the system was designed, the system worked great. I've got 130,000 miles on my system, and it's been fine. When you couple that with some age, slight wear in the, in the pump, because there's a low pressure side of your injector pump and a high pressure side. The low pressure is what's creating a less than atmospheric pressure of about five inches of mercury pulling from the tank. If you have any kind of a leak, air leak in that system, it'll suck air in and you'll never know it because it won't leak fuel, it'll suck in air. And now, the, granted, the, most of your injection systems are designed to handle a small amount of entrained air in your diesel fuel system. But when you start sucking in air through either a fitting or the common failure point on these systems seems to be the lift pump um, because this system was designed prior to ULSD, which is ultra low sulfur diesel. In 2007, 6, 7, when they introduced the ULSD, that's when a lot of these systems started developing leaks. Um, gasket failures and so forth, sucking air in and destroying pumps. Um, again, they're, they're, they're designed to deal with a small amount of entrained air, but when you start introducing more than they're designed to handle or a massive air leak, that's not what the system's designed for. Now, when we bought our coach, I detected a leak within the first couple months we had the coach back in 07. I detected a leak in my lift pump. I replaced the lift pump with a OEM Cummins uh, lift pump. And it had been fine, hadn't leaked. And then again, and that was about 50, 55, 56,000 miles when we first bought the coach. Then again, right around 100,000, I developed an erratic running at high load, and I determined that my check valve was acting up in that pump. So I replaced it again. So I've put two lift pumps on my ISL in the 75, 80,000 miles I've had it now, 14 years. So. I'm doing this more as preventive measures. Um, some friends of ours have put two lift pumps, or not lift pumps, two caps pumps on their coach in the last couple of years. So my guess is, is the mechanics they had to do it didn't research and find the original problem. They just threw a caps pump on it, and then the second one failed, and that shop was a different shop. They just put a different one on it. So. Um, I've, been, I've kept a close eye on my system. It's been tight. I've kept keep an eye on the fittings, lift pump, all that stuff. But I'm, it's getting some age on. Like I said, it's got 130,000 miles on it now. Um, I'm doing this solely as preventive maintenance to, number one, not leave me stranded somewhere when I'm on vacation. Um, as most of you are the same way. When, you have, when you're on vacation, you want to go have fun. I don't want to be broke down somewhere, so I'd rather do it here in the shop. And when I'm on vacation, go play. Um, and then the second and probably possibly foremost is I don't want anybody else touching my shit. So when I break down on vacation, I'm not going to have my shop, all my tools with me. I have quite a few, but not, not all of them. So I would more than likely have to have a, incur, incur a tow bill and possibly a shop fee to have that replaced or have it worked on. And I don't want to do that. So um, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of warding out, knowing where, knowing where problems are at, correcting them prior to them becoming a failure. So that's what we're doing here. I chose the FAST, which is a fuel and uh, air separation system. Um, th there's a lot of people that are putting the air dogs on. There's some people that are just leaving the stock systems. Whatever your choice is, that's totally up to you. Um, I know there's a lot of debate, or not, I shouldn't say debate, a lot of people doing this over on IRV2. It's been something on my to-do list for a couple of years now. To be honest with you, the coach has been running so good, I just haven't made the time to do it. But now I want to make the time to do it because it is getting up there in miles, and I want to make sure that I don't have any problems. So, again, I chose the FAS, and I'm also mounting it a little differently than a lot. 
um, a lot of them were taking the primary filter out back in the engine bay and then putting the pumps back there. I'm actually putting mine in the fuel, in the fuel tank bay right behind the steer axle. I've, I'm always, I've always been a proponent of pushing rather than pulling with a pump. So um, for a couple of reasons, I want to mount mine up by the tank and push it that distance. Um, that's just the way I choose to do it. The, the pumps will pull that far. Um, there's a lot of guys that have done it and, it and they've proven that it'll pull it that far. I'm choosing to push it. A uh, couple of reasons. Number one, if you do get a leak when you're pushing it that far, you're more apt to find it if it's under pressure. Um, you're going to create, you're going to push fuel through your filters rather than suck through, the, through it. So it's going to be more efficient. You can monitor it a little easier. And um, another big reason is the return line. With the fast, you have to run a, a, a return line coming off the uh, manifold of the pump system here. And I would rather mount everything back or up front by the tank and run a return line right into the tank rather than mount it in the back and have to run a return line 35 to 40 feet forward to the, uh, to the tank. So that's why I'm going with the fast system. Um, while I'm at it, I'm also going to install a fuel pressure gauge and a pyrometer. Um, pyrometer I've wanted to do for a while, just haven't had, gotten around to doing it. <coughs> a fuel pressure gauge, my theory is, is I can, that, that's kind of how I'll watch to check and see when I start having pressure, or uh, filters start become restricted, is when your pressure start dropping. So I'm running a fuel pressure gauge at the um, filter in the engine bay, and then also I'm running an electronic sending unit and running it up front to the cockpit area. So for that, I'm going to be running, I just got some seven conductor um, trailer harness wiring, and I'm going to run that through the chassis um, all the way up to the cockpit, back to the engine bay. Um, let's see what else. Pyrometer, I'm going to put a pyrometer in it, and um, I think that's about, that's about it. So uh, I'll take you along, show you how I'm going to mount the pump. Now, I'm sure everybody's familiar with the term project creep. This is one of those. So um, originally how I was going to mount it was onto the frame rail. I was going to build a bracket, bolt it to the drill tap, and bolt it to the frame rail. But then I realized that I need to be able to get this filter down that distance to get it off, where I only had about two inches of clearance. So... That made me rethink things. So what I ended up doing is my aqua hot surge tank was mounted up right behind the steer tire. They didn't mount it in the uh, bay where the aqua hot is at like they do on the executives and the signatures on the S series chassis. My thinking is is probably because the bays are a little taller um, on the execs and the sigs. So that's why they mounted it up front. So I went in and relocated my primary and secondary water filters, relocated them about two and a half inches um, inboard, and then I was able to relocate my surge tank just inside that compartment door in that bay. So it's basically more set up like the executives and the signatures, which freed up that area on the back of the splash panel. So then I'll build a bracket that'll go in and I can uh, I'm not going to weld it in, I'm actually going to go ahead and build a uh, structure and, and bolt it in. And that's what my pump will mount to, pump and filter assembly will mount to. Um, and then, so when I, when I pulled that off the other day, Monaco, I don't know why they did this, but they, they put the surge tank in and they painted around the surge tank. So when I pulled the surge tank off of the aqua hot, there's bare metal and a little bit of surface rust behind it. So I went ahead and DA'd, uh, run a DA sander, sanded all the inside of all that painted it up with some satin black, and um, now I'll get ready to start building my bracketry and everything. Um, the uh, wiring harness that the kit comes with, um, it looks like nice quality wires, good, good quality insulation, stranded wire. So I'll run this up to the run panel in the front of the driver's side or the uh, street side run panel of the steer tire. So I'll run the uh, power to, to feed that into there which shouldn't be, it should be a nice, easy, short run. And then the fuel. Now, on the, on also, let me back up. On the, most of your Monaco's with the ISC and the ISL, they're going to have a two filter set up. The way that runs, it goes from the tank to the primary filter, out of the primary filter to the OEM lift pump manifold, through the lift pump manifold, out of the lift pump manifold to the secondary filter, 
out of the secondary filter to the CAPS injection pump. I'm, I don't like where my, my, my secondary filter is down low, right up close to the engine. Um, you gotta kinda be a, kinda a little bit of a contortionist to get underneath it and everything. You usually end up with fuel running down your elbow when you're changing it. So I'm going to eliminate that filter and make my primary filter my new third filter. So my system is gonna run out of the tank to the new fast body manifold assembly and I'll just get a short, I'll have a short hose made up um, coming off of the tank to the inlet of the pump and then coming out of this I'm having a short hose made up where I'll connect to where the old hose come off of the tank goes back to the primary filter that is now going to be, become my third filter so it'll come into my first filter which is also the um, uh, your, your big uh, Oh, I think it's a 144 micron filter. Basically, it's going to stop the boulders and, and everything coming in. And then the um, second filter is a 2 micron that is uh, also going to be your water separator. So it'll go into that. And then the, the last filter will be just before the caps pump in the back. That's where I'm going to put a manual or a liquid filled gauge in that filter housing and I'm also going to put a sending unit there to run up to my cockpit for my electric fuel now, gauge. So this is where uh, I probably could have just gone ahead and drilled and put tech screws into the uh, eighth inch sheet metal that's in the uh, that make, that comprises the uh, fender well there but uh, if you're new to the channel that's just not the way we do stuff here in our shop. So um, what I'm doing is I machined a couple. You don't want to you don't want to bolt straight through a piece of tubing, even as thick wall as this. This is well, this is easy eighth inch thick wall. So it's one and a quarter by eighth inch thick wall, and you don't want to just bolt through it because you can crush the tube. So I machined a couple of slugs that will press in there, and I'll just fusion weld them in. Those will bolt, and I'm going to put some nut certs into the sheet metal which those will hold there. Out here on the other end, I've got a bracket that's going to be bolted like this. They'll be welded around here, and then this bolts up into the one and a half inch square tube that comprises the framework of the uh, cargo bay. And then this end is going to have a tab welded on it, like such. It's going to be drilled and tapped into the frame rail, into the webbing there, the frame rail. So basically, this is going to hold, and then I'll weld a bracket onto here to bolt the, the uh, pump to in a rubber isolator. So this is what is actually going to hold and support the fuel pump, not, not the uh, sheet metal inner structure. All right, so here's the bracket that I ended up fabricating. This will mount right behind the steer tire across in the uh, fuel bay. Um, this tab over here will go bolted into the frame and this one here goes bolted up this way and then I've got two threaded or uh, excuse me through holes that will go in and I'll put some thread certs into the uh, sheet metal so that should be more than solid and then the bracket for the pump um, will fit on there which that's about where it's going to sit. And then rather than the, 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 milk, the pump assembly come with some flange, wa uh, flange nuts and large fender washers, I opted to build a plate that will bolt on rather than, um, so I turn this around. I wanted to sandwich that on there a little better than just washers. So I've got this plate that I drilled, that's pretty precise, I drilled it to the same bolt pattern as the uh, fast bracket and then it will uh, drop down over the bolts and lastly nuts and I'll put some Loctite on those so Anyway, that's my mounting bracket. It took me quite a while to build the mounting bracket. I, I know I went overkill on it, but I don't want to transfer any vibrations up under the 
uh, my wife's seat. See, that's right underneath the co-pilot seat there. I don't want to transfer any vibrations up through there. I don't want to, to vibrate against that sheet metal or that, it's probably 10 gauge um, panel behind the steer tire there. So this ought to be solid, um, vibration proof, and uh, it's also, I'm going to have to use the rubber isolators that it come with. So I'm going to go ahead and get this painted. All right, so here's my bracket, sanded down. Painted satin black. I'll go get this mounted in the uh, fuel compartment bay and then the isolator, then the fast pump gets mounted up to it. Um, I've installed a half inch NPT to a dash 1090 for the inlet and that'll come right off the tank so I'll have a short hose made up for that and then on the other side this is going to be the one going out to the return. This is the one that's going to be teed over into the tank. And then I've got another half NPT male to a 10 JIC or AN, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing. Um, and this one, I'll have a short hose made up going over to the one I pull off of the suction side of the tank that's the original. And then I've got a, a, ten, a dash 10 to dash 10 union. I'll join those together. So basically this will feed the old line right into the back. All right, kind of wanted to get a shot of where I relocated my surge tank for my aqua hot. I moved the primary and secondary filters over about two inches and it allowed me just enough clearance to put the surge tank in. And I had to account for the, as the compartment door comes down, that strut going up and it clears it by about five eighths of an inch. I put some tape in there and some gobble grease on it and checked it. And it's about nine sixteenths to five eighths of an inch clearance with the compartment door closed. So that is where my surge tank now resides. Here's the uh, propane tank, fuel tank. This is where the surge tank did reside. And now my bracket, um, for the fast pump, bolts across from the frame. Got a couple of them uh, going into the uh, um, fender skirt there, and then up here into the upper tubing, all drilled and tapped um, tight. Uh, probably overkill. Yeah, I'd say overkill, but uh, I guess it's just the way we do stuff here. So now I'm going to get the pump and the isolator and mount the pump. All right, so there is my fast. Um, titanium series pump mounted up in the uh, fuel bay there so the line will come off here and come down and join up or hook up to the um, inlet of the tank and then coming out of this one over here it'll come around and hook to this fitting which goes back to the engine bay and then the other one coming off is going to go across the tank and into a fitting over there. So I haven't put the filters on yet because I still it'll allow me a little easier access to get to the hose connection. So probably tomorrow on the way home from work, I will uh, stop and uh, the Eric's house of hose here locally and have a couple of hoses made up. But anyway, that's how it's mounted up in there. All right, I apologize for the sound. I'm going handheld here to walk you through what I'm doing next. So back here in the engine bay, left side right behind the radiator is where my primary filter was located. This line right here is the one that comes from the tank and it's the supply up to here. This line here is the one that goes up to the lift pump end feed on the lift pump. My secondary filter was down mounted down here a little more trouble troublesome to get to so I have Remove the line, the two lines from it, which one is coming from the lift pump to the inlet, and then the out feed was going up to the caps pump. So I've removed the filter. I've removed the filter base, which bolted on. This primary one is welded on. Um, this one is the one that has the fitting on the top. Um, so what I'm going to do, I don't like, I don't know that I'll be able to get 
I don't know that I would be able to get, there's not, well, it's only about maybe an inch and three quarters of an inch uh, between my run panel, here, rear run panel, and this bracket. And like I say, it is welded on. So I'm going to take and cut the bracket off and move and bolt the other one down about another inch. That will allow me access to the top here to put in a sending unit and gauge, liquid filled gauge to read here at the back and a sending unit from the gauge up in the cockpit. Then I can run the wires right up um, along this edge of the upper engine bay and through the chassis up to the cockpit. Um, I'll also use that same wire. I'm running some seven conductor uh, trailer wiring case in case wire um, and I'll use the two wires to run from my extension module for my pyrometer which will also be mounted I'll mount the extension module the autometer extension module back here in this panel so that'll tie up I believe three wires of the seven conductor wire and then I'm going to so, use this line here that now that currently in the OEM state it feeds the inlet to the lift pump I'm going to go up to the lift pump disconnect it and route it over to the caps pump so now the fuel will flow Tank. primary filter of the FAS secondary filter of the FAS and then up to this line here which will be the third filter um, I'll just run a regular fleet guard FS 1022 and then this line here which will then feed the caps pump and it'll be make this filter a lot easier to get to for servicing so that's the way we're going to run it um, I have to go up underneath now, disconnect the two lines, come, I mean, it's the two lines, the inlet and the outlet of the lift pump. I have some caps that I'm just going to, some, some uh, dash 10 uh, JIC caps, so I'm just going to cap that off and then disconnect the line from the caps and take the inlet from the lift pump and move it over to the okay. caps. This might be kind of hard to see, but right there I've got the cap going onto the inlet of the lift pump over here is coming off the wiring uh, the wiring for the lift pump is right here in this abrasion right there is the abrasion and then it travels back along through the Adele clamps right there and it goes all the way back to the right rear run panel where I'm putting my relay so I've got, I got two wires running some abrasion coating and I'll go back to the run bay and show you where that's so at. So I'm working on the uh, relay right now for the uh, to plug the OEM lift pump uh, wires into to fool the ECM so this uh, this is probably a little overkill this is the what I used um, it's a relay and uh, um, connector assembly AR419 from Napa I think that's an Eklan part number and I'll put links to all the parts yeah, in the description of what I used on this install but um, there's the there's the relay you're going to use terminals 85 and 86 which is across the coil on the control side that's what you're going to use now you can just get the relay and put um, spade connectors insulated spade connectors on there um, that's totally acceptable um, I just like things with OEM harnesses so I bought the kit here's the receptacle or the plug and then I removed all the I moved the two load side actually the three load sides so the the normally open normally closed and the feed I removed so the only thing I have two wires I have left is the ones feeding the coil for the control side 85 and 86 so I'm gonna go connect these in now and mount the so relay here's where I chose to mount my relay I got a label it says OE lift pump. It's going to be mounted right there, right inside the right rear run box. So I pulled the uh, um, abrasion casing back. I got a couple of uh, butt connectors with the heat shrink built into them. So I'm just shrinking them down. Put the casing all the way down. I put some heat shrink on it as well. So run it up underneath. Go ahead and melt, heat it up. 
plug that into the relay. Secure the relay. Wiring up inside. I'm actually going to take a zip tie. A little bit long zip tie, but it's the only one I have here in the cart handy. Flush cuts, trim that off. The relay's installed. So I can put this cover back on the run the rear run relay. Actually after I blow it out, actually get a little bit of dust and stuff back in there. But that will give me access to the lift pump relay. If uh, ever it the relay goes bad, easily accessible. I don't have to climb up underneath. Uh, I know a lot of guys are mounting their zip tying them right up to the lift pump, per perfectly acceptable. Um, I just wanted something a little more uh, readily available or accessible rather um, for out on the road. All right, so here is my secondary um, filter housing. This is the one that's got the circle cut out of it. This is actually the one that I think Cummins mounts up on the engine itself. So I've got the um, primary one for the Monaco bracket off and drilled and this is ready to go, ready to be bolted on in its place. So before I do that, I figured I'd to go ahead and get this all set up. Um, what you're going to need is a 10 millimeter by 1.0 thread pitch to a 3 8 um, or excuse me, excuse me, to a, to a 1 8 NPT for your gauge. Now I'm actually going to put a T in so I can put my sending unit for the auto meter gauge as well as my little one and a half inch uh, glycerin filled uh, gauge here. All so. Right, so I've got the adapter in. Um, you want to get the one with either the crush washer or the o-ring. Um, it's not a tapered fitting. Then I take, I just got a T, an eighth inch NPT T here. And I'm not a big fan of Teflon, especially on fuel systems and hydraulic systems. So I take a little bit of thread sealant. Um, not a big fan of just like regular pipe dope, um, putty or whatever. I actually prefer to use the sealant and keep it off the first couple of threads there. And then that will thread in. All right, now I offset it just a little bit for a uh, couple of reasons. Number one, that way it'll keep the sending unit kind of tucked back out of the way, but yet it will allow, and I'm going to put a, just a street elbow, which is a 45, and that will allow that gauge to be seen from the so engine So here's bay. the back end finished up. Um, the bracket is mounted. I got my liquid filled gauge, the sending unit for the uh, electronic gauge is gonna be up the cockpit. I still have to finish running the wire. Here's the wire. It's a seven conductor that I run up through the chassis. Um, I'll tie the pyrometer wiring and the fuel sending unit wiring into this. Um, this is the line coming directly from the, right now it's coming from the tank. As soon as I go up front, this will be coming from the fast, so this will be uh, the fuel line coming directly from the fast manifold. This line here is the one now going up to the caps pump directly. Um, this is the one that used to go to the lift pump, and I've rerouted that to the caps pump. So, and then also tied in my sensor wire, put it in some convoluted casing and run it over and uh, connected it to the existing wires that was over on the other side of the engine. So here's the back end finished up. Um, I think it's, now it's time. I think I've got everything pretty much done back here other than I just have to hook up my sitting unit and wire in my pyrometer. But other than that everything back here is done. So we're going to go back up to the fuel tank bay and I've had a couple new hoses made up 
um, we'll join those hoses and wire up the uh, fast pump. All right, so here's my lines I had made up just at the local supply house. Um, they're dash 10, which is 5 8 um, JIC. So I've got a 32 inch one and a 40 inch one. The 32 inch one is going to connect from the outlet of the FAS to the line that is now connected onto the tank. It's a supply to the back, but I'm going to undo that one and it will hook to this 32 inch one. So it'll come off the FAS and go directly to a union here to the other one and go right back to the number three filter back in the engine bay. Then I have a 40 inch hose. That one's going to come off the tank uh, bolt, uh, bung and loop around and tie into the inlet of the fast. That's going to be the supply to the fast pump. And then I've got the uh, blue um, f uh, fuel line that comes with the fast kit. It's actually a pretty good quality hose. Um, and it's just going to use these press on fittings. I'll probably put some Oedeker clamps on them and also some abraded or some abrasion resistance coating. I'll slip over it, but this will come off of the return line of the FAS and go over to this fitting that's going to be over on the driver's side of the uh, tank. And then I'll put the filters on last after I uh, probably after I do definitely after I do the hoses and then wire it in. So let's go back over to the uh, RV bay and back over the coach and start putting hoses on. All right, so this is over on the driver's side of the tank. This is my vent line right here. Uh, I'm gonna pull this out, there's already a bung in the tank here. And I'm going to insert this half inch NPT T and then take this 90, put it into this port here. So it'll sit in there like that. And the, and the vent will come out and go up and over and down, which will still allow it um, uh, access to the outside without dumping fuel out of it. And the return line from the fast is going to come in here and go straight through into okay, the tank. So here is the return line that will come off the fast um, here with a rounded elbow. And it will run across the tank and go over to my uh, bulkhead fitting over at the driver's side of the tank. I went ahead and put it all inside this abrasion uh, coating for a couple reasons. Number one, it works good if it's sitting there going like this across that tank. It's not going to rub through on the hose. And second of all, it looks better because I mean you can kind of still see the blue from the hose through the abraded or the abrasion coating, but for the most part. When you look up underneath there, you won't see that blue hose and it'll look OE and nobody will be any the wiser. With the ends, these are, these are a push to connect hose and this is low, fairly low pressure. Um, so I just went ahead and put a couple of these Oedeker clamps on anyway and crimped them down, one on each end, um, to not only hold the uh, hose onto the uh, fitting, but also to hold the abrasion coating up into place against the uh, the end of the hose there. So anyway, I'm going to go over and install this now and then um, hook up the other two hoses and the hose routing is complete. All right, I hope this shows up in video. It's kind of dark under here. Um, for reference, here's the fuel filler. Here's the fuel tank. This is the um, splash shield right behind the passenger steer tire. So this is where I've mounted the uh, fast titanium pump assembly. So off coming off here is a 5 8 with dash 10 JIC fitting going over looping around and connecting to the fuel tank. So that's going to draw fuel right directly from the tank. Then over here is the return line coming out half inch, coming out of a dash eight JIC, running across the tank over to the bung on the driver's side. Then over here is a dash 10 JIC with another five eighths hose. That one comes around, loops around and ties in right here with a, with a dash 10 union to the line going back to the filter number three in the engine bay. This is the old line that went back to 
the primary filter inlet. It is now serving as the filter number three inlet um, up here in the engine bay, or excuse me, the fuel tank bay. So all that is remaining is to connect my electrical. Uh, I just crawled out from underneath and right over there in the far corner is a factory uh, har uh, loom on the other side uh, above the H-frame where there's a, some, several looms of wire. So I'm going to go through there. I'm going to drill a hole through there, put a grommet, and I'm going to go through and that's where I'm going to run the wiring through. Okay, so the electrical connection is the last piece of the puzzle here. Uh, this is the left front run box in front of the um, driver's or uh, street side steer tire. So I come in up to the top, I drop down, connect it to the relay, and then the relay, the control side, went over to um, the ignition, the accessory and ignition load center. There was an empty um, wire position in that, so I took over it and put a 3 amp fuse in it, which is what it came equipped with. And then the load side come over, actually I tied the negative into the ground over here under the steering uh, smart wheel controller. The load side, I come over, put a 10 amp fuse here, labeled it, and tied into the power coming into the run box. So, and then the other, I just put a, a Dell clamp and secured everything, the, re the remaining wire. I could have shortened it up, uh, which probably wouldn't have been a bad idea, but I didn't really want to have to go through and cut the fuse. They had a nice job, did a nice job on heat shrinking and connecting the fuse holder and everything in there. So, um, I just looped the wire around, tie wrapped it, um, should give you know, if I ever need to have it relocated or anything like that in the future, I'll have that um, ability. But other than that, this is where I tied it in at. And like I said, I went out and then I followed factory looms back along the frame rail, under and over to the middle, um, where I drilled a hole, went through, put a rubber grommet, and went through on the fuel bay and connected to the fuel pump. And then also that's where I come through with my seven conductor wire from the engine bay, it comes underneath, a, uh, there's a rigid piece of uh, tubing, piece of plastic EMT that Monaco ran down the chassis. I run the wiring through there and followed it all the way back. So basically these two wires were following the factory loom and then the seven conductor wire for the time being, I just have coiled up right here on top of the Jenny and it will go up underneath the dash and over to the, uh, um, panel by the left, by the driver's left knee, where I'm going to install my fuel pressure gauge, uh, another boost gauge, and my pyrometer all in one console. Okay, so this is the first fire. Uh, one thing worth noting on this is to prime the system, because um, you're pulling, all, got, all my hoses are empty. So in order to get fuel from the tank up to the, uh, or into the, the first filter there, um, they suggest leaving the uh, output filter uh, slightly loose. So I'm going to hustle here. I'm going to run in, key the ignition on. That should activate the pump. And then as soon as you hear an audible change in the pump, I'm going to tighten up the uh, filter, and that should start priming the whole system. Or that should at least prime the, the pump assembly. Then I'll start forcing it through the rest of the system. The tone changing yet? There, oh, there we go. Almost missed, almost made it without making a mess. Almost. That's to be nice and quiet. So I can hear it dumping back to the tank over there. We go over and double check on it, make sure he's okay over there. We go to the back now, open the pet cock on the filter number three, going right before the caps, so make sure that good fuel flow coming out of it. Yeah, that is nice and quiet. Okay, 
I got fuel back filter. We're gonna fire it up. That pretty much concludes the installation of the uh, FAS uh, fuel air separation system on our 2003 Monaco Dynasty on the Roadmaster chassis with the, uh, the S-Series chassis with the uh, Cummins ISL 8.9 liter engine. Um, granted, you can do it a lot simpler than the way I did it. Um, I like the way I installed it. Uh, that's why I wanted to show kind of a different way. A lot of guys are, like I say, are mounting them back in the back with in place of the number of the primary filter. This is just another option. Um, I wanted to mount it up next to the tank and push it, so that's what I did. Um, the it, the installation wasn't bad. The the biggest part, as far as I'm concerned, was just trying to make it all look OE um, using the you know the five eighths braided hoses with the JIC fittings, um, things like that. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description to the uh, FAST system that I used. And I probably could have got away with the, the I think they have a 100. Um, they did. They discontinued the 95 gallon. They, went, they have a 100 and then they go to 165. Um, I very easily could have got away with the 100. But after talking to the guys at FAST, kind of getting their feel for it, this is the one they usually recommend for like the over the road trucks, which this engine did come in a lot of the over the road trucks and you know, pretty much all kinds of across the, across the uh, industry as far as things other than RVs. So I went ahead and went with this one. Um, it is nice and quiet. Um, one thing that I distinctly or that I distinctly picked up on and even I, I thought, first I thought maybe it was a placebo effect, but my son just came over a few minutes ago and I had him list, I just, just asked him what he thought immediately he says it seems idle smoother i thought it did too um, after the first couple initial starts the first one it kind of loped a little bit but i didn't have any fuel from the filter number three to the caps system to the to the caps injection pump because i had that line off so it took a second to get that um fuel pushed from the filter number three to the injection pump and and then, and then get all that air out of there and it did it fairly quick but um, that's why it kind of run a little rough. This is a several times, and it smooths right out as you heard in the video. And then I started up probably half a dozen times after that. Um, it starts, I don't know that it starts any faster. It always started really well within you know a few seconds of cranking, it fires right up. It's always done that. And I always thought it idled pretty good, but it does, it does idle smoother. Um, at first I thought maybe it was just, like I said, placebo effect or something. You, know, you spend that kind of money on something, you want to feel good about it, you want to, be able to tell but my son just came over and again he said yeah it's uh it seems smoother so um that made me happy now um uh i'm gonna put a link in the description uh, of all the parts i used most every the, the most everything come in this um ts it's a titanium series it's ts d 08-165 g um so it comes with the manifold, the pump, the titanium series pump, which is, a, they call it their whisper series or whisper technology, and it is quiet, I gotta give them that. Um, I, that, was my that was one of my concerns about mounting it up front, is it's gonna be right underneath the wife's um, chair, seat going down the road. I didn't want, it, and you, you can't hear it outside. You can hear it when you turn the key on, faintly behind the compartment doors, but um, once, the, once the coach is running, you can't hear it at all. Um, so, I used that kit and then I used a couple of, I used the relay um, to fool the ECM. I used a, an adapter to go from a 10 millimeter to, to a, a, a by 1.0 to an eighth inch NPT and a couple of Earl's 
and uh, a couple of Earls and a Russell the JIC fittings to uh, NPT fittings. So I'll go ahead and put a link of all those. And then as far as hoses go, um, I used just a couple of, I went over to my local hose shop, had them make up a 32 inch and a 40 inch. You're gonna have to measure your specific application. And I, I probably could have got away with a little shorter, but I put some nice, um, pretty generous bends in there so that I wouldn't kink anything off. Um, some nice S curves going on the one, going to connect into the OEM line feeding back. Um, so I put, I put some pretty generous bends in there. Uh, you know, it's up to you. Load this low pressure, you could very easily use the hose that the FAST provides with the, uh, the barb connections. That's all they use on the, um, on the light duty pickup trucks with the Cummins, the Duramax, and the, I believe the Power Strokes as well. I don't have any experience with those, mainly just the Duramax and the, and the Cummins. But, um, all in all, it's, it, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty straightforward installation. Again, I just wanted to show you uh, how, I, how I installed mine. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I hope this was helpful. There's a lot of posts. If you have any questions, go over to irv2.com into the Cummins section and, and search it. There is a ton of threads over there of people that, have having, that are either having or have had CAPS uh, injection pump failures on, on a lot of the ISCs. Um, probably just because it's more prevalent uh, compared to the ISLs, but they're pretty much are the same system, the same fuel system. So um, there's a ton of information over there. If you have any questions, those guys over there can answer them. I just haven't seen any video installations, so I wanted to uh, um, do a video installation. So I hope this was helpful and maybe at least clarified it, showed, showed the ease of installation. Um, but I want to thank you for watching. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. I welcome the comments. Um, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you make sure and get more updates as videos come out. I appreciate it. Thank you.